There's something special about how Ricky Jay does magic. There's no doubt that he's a master of his craft, with several sleight of hand tools at his disposal, amazing feats of memory, and a shaky relationship with fruit as displayed in his propensity for card throwing. Yeah! But his greatest asset, above all else, when it comes to performing, is his pattern. Who's and the blowins top the lot? Anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> Comedians and magicians do it all the time. It's that memorized speech that rides synchronously to the performance. The carefully chosen words which add character and context to the actions taking place. For the magician, one's patter is so often the tool that separates you from other magicians. The intricacies of picking a car and memorizing it can far too easily become boring to spectators, routine, a tedious formality on the road to getting fooled. Want to have an audience really remember your trick? Tell them a story. But he still doesn't know what to do with Daigora. He has to literally decide whether he is going to take Daigora with him into this path of retribution, into purgatory, lone wolf unto the Hades with a baby cart, or have to kill his own child. How does he determine this? What separates Ricky's pattern from most is the three-dimensionality it takes on, the three lenses through which he focuses his genius, the historical, the humorous, and the hustler. First is the historical, a domain Ricky has great respect for. His performances are often colored by the deep well of references he draws from, both magical and non-magical alike. The same reverence he has for the great stage acts who came before, whose genius informs so many of his tricks, extends to classic movies and 70s funk hits. But it's not just what references he calls upon, it's the way he talks about them. He's an orator by trade, and the flowery, almost romantic speech that dominates his patter is enhanced by his academic decorum. The stern countenance he wears when dispensing knowledge concerning all things prestidigitation. He chooses words like a chef chooses his knife, which is to say, with precision. My 52 assistants. Notice the contrast of style and character. They range from ingratiating simplicity to regal splendor. Some are passive and inert, others brazen and belligerent, some suicidal, just like you and me. It's not just patter that sounds good, it's patter that aims to teach. So often, Ricky Jay stages his magic tricks as history lessons, finding wisdom worth imparting in the most clerical parts of the art form from making distinctions between the different shuffling methods used in various casinos, to reciting 15th century canting poems whose internal meaning, impenetrable as it often is, can't help but stir the audience all the same. Of course, when you draw from a well of references so vast and esoteric, you know they can't all land, that would be ridiculous. So when they don't, well, that's where his bone dry wit comes into play. So that means you have to make 14 piles with the cards, quickly. Uh, would you do that because 14 equals 9 in the mysterious triangle of Eichlon? <laughs> it undercuts the academic decorum, he's deeply funny. But more than simply being funny, Ricky, probably more than any other magician, understands the absurdity of his position. To be a magician is to be an entertainer, and as he mentions, just like other art forms such as theater or dance, magic is a performance of theatrics, of intense drama and comedy that aim to both enhance and subvert one another. Moreover, he finds comedy in the strangest places, in the furrowing of a brow, in the unsheathing of a giant pair of scissors, in a wind-up bunny. This rabbit, this rabbit will find your card or die. <laughs> it's within this comedy that Ricky lays a truth bare for all the audience to see. He reveals the imbalance of power at the center of the magician-audience relationship. We sit there on the edge of our seats, waiting, hoping, expecting to be impressed. This puts a lot of undue pressure on the performer. But rather than evade that responsibility, Ricky leans into it, stretching the ridiculous aspects of his personality further than we're often expecting. The end result is a kind of patter whose point is as shocking as the trick that it's a part of. Many of you will notice that my last two shots have landed in exactly the same slit in the watermelon. A feat so impressive, I am forced to mention it myself. <laughs> the third thing that underscores Ricky's patter is his emphasis on creating teacher-student relationships and then breaking them two seconds later. 
his beautiful blend of honesty and deception. So often in his tricks he positions himself not as the magician but as a cheater, a swindler, a con man, a hustler, a former card shark now letting you in on the secret tricks of the trade. From fake shuffles and false dealings to cutting aces and courting queens, his sleight of hand serves as an exercise, a lesson, one you should take great caution in heeding. In a room full of spectators, these tricks dazzle, they excite, they impress. In a room full of hustlers, gamblers, high rollers, and players, well, if I perform equally poorly at the card table, I could suffer loss of limb or even life. Notwithstanding. He's our friend, sure, but he isn't shy about making a fool out of our expectations as audience members. After all, we want to be fooled. <laughs> and that is the ace of clubs, the card the woman on the aisle took, your ace of clubs. Your card was, you're shaking your head now? No. Ace of clubs? What was it? Four of diamonds. If you insist. <laughs> In his near 65 years of performing, Ricky Jay achieved what few performers of any medium could hope for. He was a magician that didn't just perform, he created environments, worlds that were as rich and detailed in character as they were in history. He understood the balance between meeting the audience at their level and soaring even higher, revealing what a master of his craft is truly capable of. And most importantly, he understood the power of words not only to distract, but to enhance, to move an audience from the ordinary to the extraordinary to the astounding with a greater force than the actual card tricks could ever hope to achieve. Put simply, he was the greatest to ever do it. Mind Theater is a solo effort produced and written by me, Aowacking Bade. For updates on the show as well as upcoming episodes, follow My Theater Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. If you want to show monetary support, the Kofi link is in the show notes. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time.